Uh, acting Speaker, my grievance this morning is to the Minister for Industrial Relations. And Minister, I thank you for taking my grievance. My grievance concerns uh, industrial manslaughter. Minister, in 2015, Joe McDermott and Jerry Bradley were crushed by a precast concrete panel on a Jackson building construction site while sitting having a break. This accident occurred in what should have been an exclusion area during high-risk work. The transport company who delivered the precast panels, that's not Jackson, this is the transport company who delivered the precast panels, was found guilty of failing to provide a safe workplace. They were given a fine of $60,000 for each death. That's it, $60,000 for each death. In December 2017, young Wesley Ballantyne fell and was killed while installing a glass ceiling for the H and a glass ceiling for the H&M development in the old post office, the GPO um, building in Perth's CBD. As I say, he was 17 years old. Despite, despite pleading guilty in failing to comply with their workplace safety ob obligations, Velmont were fined $38,000. The company had considered installing scaffold to eliminate what, was, what they knew was an obvious and high-risk uh, hazard, but the company decided to, to not install the scaffold after getting quotes for its construction. Instead, Mr Ballantyne fell to his death and the company was fined $38,000. He was 17. In 2002, Des Kelsch was killed when a concrete panel fell and killed him. In 2007, Luke Murray was killed. Uh, Minister, there's been a long history of uh, discussion and debate about industrial manslaughter laws. Um, most recently, uh, this issue has come up uh, with the review of workplace health and safety that was conducted by Marie Boland. Now, the uh, genesis of that review, as you would know, Minister, is as follows. All the way back in February 2008, the Workplace Relations Minister's Council, that's every state and territory Minister for Workplace Relations and the Commonwealth Minister for Workplace Relations, all agreed that the most effective uh, way to achieve harmonisation in workplace health and safety was through model legislation. Now, Minister, we know the history. A federal Labor government introduced the Work Health and Safety Act in 2013. In 2016, the Abbott Liberal government retained that legislation with some amendments. And then in 2018, the Turnbull Liberal government appointed Ms Boland to conduct a review of the work health and safety uh, regime. Uh, Ms Boland was an uh, eminent uh, senior executive with a long history in workplace health and safety, having previously been the CEO of Safe, Safe Workplace South Australia. Now, the problem is that while we've seen all of these developments on the federal level, um, in 2008, the state Liberal government was elected into power in Western Australia. And so in response to the Ministerial Council in 2008, they didn't do anything. In response to the 2013 model work health and safety legislation, they didn't do anything. In response to the Abbott government's amendments to the model work health and safety legislation, uh, they didn't do anything. And then finally we had the election of the McGowan Labor government in 2017. Now, Ms Boland delivered her report to ministers in late 2018 and it was published in early 2019. The uh, journalist uh, Jared Butt had this to say about the ministers about the release of the report. Safe Work Australia has released Mary Boland's final report into the effectiveness of the model work health and safety laws. There are 34 recommendations. Key recommendations include introducing the offence of industrial manslaughter, increasing penalties overall, making it easier for union officials to enter work sites, and banning insurance against work health and safety penalties. More broadly, the ACT in Queensland have already introduced industrial manslaughter provisions with other jurisdictions considering it, and so this new offence also aims to enhance and maintain harmonisation of work health and safety laws. Now, Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry CEO James Pearson welcomed the release of the report, particularly the recommendation for more practical and realistic guidance materials. So this is a report authored by Ms Boland, appointed by a Liberal federal government, a report which is the release of which was welcomed by James Pearson from the, Chamber, from the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The ACTU, of course, also welcomed the report. Uh, 
uh, with Assistant Secretary Liam O'Brien saying bosses who cut corners and kill workers should go to jail. Australians want urgent action to prevent more workplace deaths. States and territories in the Commonwealth need to act to ensure there are real deterrents in place which will force employers to make sure workplaces are safe. Now, ReachTel did a survey of uh, attitudes to workplace health and safety, and they found as follows. 58.8% of Australians want new laws which would see employers who are responsible for workplace deaths held accountable and ultimately sent to jail. 80.1% want to see significant financial penalties for employers who don't manage psychological hazards such as bullying and stress. And 62.5% believe that unions are an important part of improving workplace health and safety. And of that group, 88% believe that laws should be strengthened to help workers stay safe and work and allow unions to do the job of enforcing workplace safety. Now, when it comes to occupational health and safety, since the commencement of the McGowan Labor government, we've already had the initial reforms to the Workers' Compensation Act to provide for fairer remedies, particularly in the case of the death of a worker. We've also had significant and long overdue increases in penalties for companies that breach occupational health and safety laws. We've had the appointment of more than 20 additional worksafe inspectors to go out onto work safes to make to go out onto work sites to make sure that they are safe. We've had the Ministerial Expert Panel on Work Health and Safety, which I was very honoured to be involved in, which was a tripartite panel involving government, industry and employer associations and the trade union movement, all coming together to discuss collaboratively, collaboratively how to improve occupational health and safety. And we have this activist government which is getting on with the job of improving workplace health and safety. But there remains, as Ms Boland said, this one area which needs to be harmonised to protect workers, to remove discrepancies for businesses working in multiple jurisdictions and to meet community standards and expectations. Is this an opportunity for the Liberal Opposition to improve their record on workplace health and safety? Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Member, for the grievance. And uh, you raise a critical issue in society, which is what is the appropriate penalty for illegal conduct in workplaces? Um, it is already the case that uh, a, a person responsible for a death in a, in a work site, it's already possible for that person to be prosecuted for the crime of manslaughter. However, it's almost never going to occur because the investigations that are done are commenced, of course, by WorkSafe and therefore not by the police. And that means that the evidence that's required to sustain a charge of manslaughter is unlikely to um, ever be collected when the agency doing the investigation is not the police. So um, what we do need, therefore, and, and, uh, is a, an appropriate penalty in the most extreme cases of a failure to provide a safe workplace. And, uh, the Boland Review, and I congratulate Marie Boland on her excellent review, uh, recommendation 23B says, uh, amend the model WHS Act to provide for a new offence of industrial manslaughter. The offence should provide for gross negligence causing death and include the following. The offence can be committed by a PCBU and an officer as defined under section four of the model WHS Act. The conduct engaged in on behalf of a body corporate is taken to be conduct engaged in by the body corporate. A body corporate's conduct includes the conduct of the body corporate when viewed as a whole by aggregating the conduct of its employees, agents or officers. The offence covers the death of an individual to whom a duty is owed. So it's quite a comprehensive and specific uh, uh, set of recommendations uh, for, for the offence. And the government supports this, and the Premier announced in August that uh, we would be including an offence of uh, industrial manslaughter into the work health and safety legislation when we introduce it uh, as soon as we can. Now, I'm, I need to point out that, uh, of course, the law in Western Australia is subject to interpretation. And the courts in Western Australia have actually dealt with the specific words that are included in the Queensland legislation and have come to a different conclusion about the meaning of those words. And so, therefore, we need to take account of that in developing our legislation. So there will be, as the Premier announced in August, there will be a two-tier manslaughter charge, which is very unusual, but it's to take account of the decisions of the courts here in Western Australia 
and the, their, their specific interpretation of the words that have been recommended to use, because it's no point just having the same words if they don't have the same effect. Uh, so we're, we're, we're looking forward to doing this. And of course, one of the advantages of the work health and safety legislation is the creation of these, uh, the PCBU. Uh, so that's the persons conducting a business or undertaking. So at the moment, each employer is separate. So you have, you know, as you know, in a modern workplace, there may be different employers of individual workers in the workplace. Uh, so the idea of a PCBU is to make sure that it's clear that the person in charge is still the person responsible. And there's, of course, been um, uh, ad, uh, you know, um, interest, you know, decisions of courts that have not held to account the people that the community would have expected to be held to account uh, in those circumstances. So that's why the idea of creating the PCBU is so important. It's one of the big changes that the work health and safety legislation uh, brings in. And as I say, this is not a Labor Liberal thing. We're implementing the recommendations of the Boland Review that was established by the federal Liberal government. And we're implementing the work health and safety legislation, which has been implemented in every state in the country except for Victoria. So, um, you know, this is a, a, needed, a needed reform. Um, it's also true that we have appointed, or we, we, we're in the process of appointing 21 additional WorkSafe inspectors. It's interesting that, of course, we also appointed an eight additional inspectors before that, where we allocated resources of the department to this because it's a priority of the government. And so, even before we added that extra resources in in August this year, we also had, in, in any case, increased the number of inspectors by eight by for, by uh, allocating resources available to the department to this. In, you know, so we prioritised health and safety. So that will bring Western Australia's uh, general WorkSafe uh, inspectorate up to the same proportion as occurs in every other state of the country, or at least the same as every other state of the country. It will break, take us from last place to middle of the pack and is, a, is a, a, a great decision because, of course, it's already changing the way that WorkSafe works. They're now being much more proactive and we can see that in their response to the uh, challenges of silica dust. Uh, something that you grieved to me about a little while ago. Um, also, we've appointed an independent commissioner uh, uh, to the position of, of WorkSafe commissioner so that you can have uh, a, an independent mind brought to the important role of WorkSafe commissioner because the WorkSafe commissioner has strong statutory responsibilities under the existing legislation and under the new work health and safety model legislation. So we appointed, we, we held a national selection process and chose a high quality individual, Darren Kavanagh, to be the, uh, which was widely welcomed across the industry. Uh, he was a, 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 an official at the Department of Defence, the federal bureaucracy before his appointment to uh, the role of commissioner. So we've got this independent mind now. We've, we've appointed uh, 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 Stephanie Mayman as chairman of, the, of, the, of COSH and we've re-energised COSH and we've asked COSH to take on a role of a range of tasks and of course most significantly was their uh, support for the um, uh, code of practice for mental, mental health, healthy FIFO workplaces. So you can see we're really bringing a new mind to this process. And we're very pleased. Uh, every death in a workplace is tragic and people need to be held accountable where there's been criminal behaviour and we want to make sure that uh, that can happen uh, very soon.